Hi, this is a quick tutorial to show you how to make um, custom generators and other um, additions for Substance Painter using Substance Designer. Here's one I've made already, it's sort of a crack pattern. You can adjust it using the parameters over here. Um, and it's the sort of thing that I find useful to do. So this is Substance Painter, but we're going to make it in Substance Designer and then export it for use in Substance Painter. So here we are in Substance Designer. This is the final graph, but we're going to make it again from scratch. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to go New Substance Graph. It's going to be completely empty. I'm going to set this up to a bit higher than 512 just so it's easier to see what we're doing. So first thing I'm going to we're just going to create a generator so I'm just going to create a single output node. You don't need to name it anything special because this um, type of no this type of um, package only produces sort of a black and white image. Now I'm going to create a cells node. New cells one. I'm going to make the scale a bit bigger than that. And then I'm going to get edge detect. Set the edge width, leave it at 2, set the roundness to 0. Change the scale of the cells a bit more, bigger. Now we have something that sort of looks like cracks. I'm going to get a pearl and noise. Again, increase the scale and get a warp. Add the Perlin noise to the gradient input and it starts to... Now you have a set of lines that go sort of wiggly. Connect this to the output. Now I'm going to grab all this, duplicate it, add a blend node. With these I'm going to change the random seed on the cells so it becomes different and the random seed on the pearl and noise so it becomes different and change the disorder on both of these. Make the scale on this one slightly different to the original. Yes. Then plug this into the blend Change it add sub, plug it into the output. Now I'm going to get another cells. Just this. Cells 4 makes a black and white pattern instead of the um, gradients. And plug that in as the mix. 
there we have a sort of random looking crack type thing. I'm going to get a threshold which will clamp the color values, adjust it up a bit. leave it everything else as normal and put in a invert I'm going to turn that to off as default the invert grayscale is really just something that I find very useful to have on it on every node because you never know when you want to reverse it and it's an annoying to try and reverse that manually. So I'll save the package instead of and rename the graph So now I'm going to do something pretty important. On all of these nodes that generate a pattern, I'm going to go through and set the output resolution bit depth to absolute and set it to 16. If you don't do that, it samples it down and it looks terrible. This is ensuring that you always get nice smooth gradients. When in Substance Designer. So now, before I do anything else, I'm going to publish this to Substance Designer, so we can bring it in uh, to Substance Painter, so we can bring it into Substance Painter and um, have a look at what we've done. So in your Documents folder under Adobe, there's a Painter folder, you want to go into Assets, and then we're going to save this into procedurals where the original one is so now if I start up substance painter we can take a quick look and see what we've done I had a fill layer and then for the base color we have Craxo2 here. Now you notice here there are no parameters, nothing I can adjust. Whereas before there were all those parameters. We do have the random seed. Sometimes this is all you need to do because you can just put multiple layers in and then hit this random button to give you a different pattern. So we'll close this, don't save it. Something that I find helpful is to set this just in case you want to use that kind of um, setting in Substance Painter. Add some tags.
and so on. For a generator, you don't need to set which what type it is. But now we will expose some parameters. So the way you do that is you click on a node like this. And where it says, say, for example, scale, there's a little button. You can go click on that and go expose as new graph input. You can just leave all this default, but I always change the name. So, um, uh, what would we call this? Mm. The label is the important thing to change because that's what you'll actually see. Okay. Now, for things like this, for example, there's this edge width parameter, and I want to be able to change this, but I have two nodes here, and I want them to both use the same parameter. So what you can do is expose this new graph input. I'll just leave that the same because there'll be only one of them. But here I click on the other node, and I go use existing graph input edge width. Now when we import it, both of these nodes will use the same parameter. All of these output parameters are visible if you click on the substance graph and scroll down, they come up as a list here. So here they are. So you can rename them if you get the name wrong or you just don't like what it's called or you can adjust the other things to do with it. Here for the invert, I can expose that as a new graph output. So now save. Now if I republish the SBS AR file, it will just go back and overwrite the one that already exists. And if I open up this test file you can see now we have a series of parameters and I can adjust the scale I can invert it and so on and that's how you make a generator using Substance Designer for Substance Painter.